time for the news. Sumter County News. The latest victim has been identified as a 78-year-old woman who hadn't traveled recently but had been in contact with someone else suffering from the virus. She is among the 164 cases that's been reported in Sumter County where the patients range from 17 to 92 and have a medium age of 66. 37 also have required hospital care. Overall, the villages is holding steady with 76 cases, 68 in Sumter County, 7 in Lake County, and 1 in Marion County. While the Tri-County area is reporting 510 patients, there has been 21 deaths and 113 hospitalizations. So the struggle marches on. Here's a, a lawsuit that's been going on for a little while now. It's a couple that used to be employed at the Villages Realty Company. They left. I think they started their own company selling homes, the way I'm understanding it, Realty Company. The developer is suing them because he says they're in violation of an employee contract. The people that started this other company is saying they did not have an employee contract. They were employees. Huge difference in business. I'm going to step out on the limb. I don't know what's going on here, but I just can't imagine a developer's company as smart as they are in business, not having papers signed, sealed, and delivered by their attorney attorneys showing that these people were in fact employee or contracted employees time will tell it's going to go to court properties of the villages is seeking an injunction against rogue sales agents that claims are doing irreparable harm to the powerful sales arms of florida's friendliest hometown Properties of the Villages are seeking an injunction. Properties of the Villages on Friday fired its latest legal salvo in the David versus Goliath battle. That's the second time I've heard that, David versus Goliath battle. It's like, it's like whoever these reporters are, they get their hand on something and they just keep saying it over and over and over again. Uh, well, my phone just changed. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? David versus Goliath battle being waged in U.S. District Court in Ocala. In addition, Properties of the Villages has cast a wider net for the defecting sales representatives who have joined original rogue agents Christopher Day and Jason Krantz, founder of KD Premier Realty LLC. Among these newly named in the lawsuit is Kelly Shipes, who announced on January 10 her departure from Properties of the Villages. Shipes, a former college volleyball star, was subsequently informed her services as a coach were no longer needed at the Villages Charter School. <laughs> you got to wonder about some of this. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's just goofy. If she's volunteering to work at the charter school teaching volleyball to girls and, and, and the, the developer has a lawsuit against this other company, so is the developer telling the people at the charter school who they can hire and who they can fire? You gotta wonder, because I think I did this story about my doctor and how all of a sudden I was told I couldn't have a village's doctor even though I was in the village's system because they said they were holding 400 spots open for future buyers of homes in the Finney area when they started building Finney. And I asked, I tried my darndest to find out who tells you that I can't have a doctor of my choice? 
Hmm, properties of the villages according to, to court documents claims that Day and Krantz have violated their independent contractor agreements and as a result, properties of the villages has suffered and will continue to suffer irreparable harm by reasons of the competitive nature of the business. A key provision in the properties of the villages contract with its salespeople is the 24 month non-compete clause. Yeah, when I sold a business years ago, it was an electro electronic business, not like you think. It was uh, for home electronics, wiring, all that conduit, all that kind of stuff. And I sold it to another company in the same town because I just didn't want to do it anymore. Actually, it was getting harder and harder for me to compete with these larger companies. That's when Walmart was starting to show up everywhere. And I ended up selling it while the getting was good because another company wanted to buy it. And their attorney asked me to do a five-year non-compete. And I could not have another electrical business. It seems to me it was like a hundred mile radius of that town. And I couldn't, if I was going to open another one, it had to be outside that hundred mile radius, but I couldn't do it for five years or something like that. So that's really pretty common. It, it kind of protects their investment. So I do kind of understand that. Uh, the lawsuit claims that the rogue salespeople who acted willfully, maliciously, and in bad faith. It is seeking comp com compensatory and punitive damages in an amount to be determined at trial together with interest. Krantz and Day have launched a counter assault, claiming properties of the villages misclassified the sales representatives as independent contractors when they were in fact employees. I guess we'll just keep an eye on that and see how that turns out. Donations pour in for Cody's restaurant manager who lost home in Easter fire. That's Mary. Uh, I don't know if I've ever got her on any of my videos down there or not because whenever we had beer day down there, there was like one big major crybaby that used to cry about me pulling the camera out, which was just amazing to me. If you had a cell phone, people taking pictures everywhere, that was okay. Bring out a camera, oh my God. All of a sudden, they're all lawyers telling me what I can and can't do. And so just to keep peace, I just quit doing it. But um, yeah, Mary uh, started out as a server and then she worked her way up to being a manager because Cody's down there um, had a bad time with managers. They were, they, they were there for a while and then they were gone and then they get somebody else and then they're gone. And I can't remember what all the problems was. Seems to me one guy uh, was fired because he got pulled over by the cops uh, drunk driving or something. And then there was another one that got caught with his hand in the tail. And so they fired him. Uh, and then the, uh, the restaurant was shut down for health reasons, the health board, probably bugs or something. And then, uh, anyway, Mary took over and I guess the place had been going pretty good until the virus hit. Uh, well, here, here she is out of a job basically and her house burns down and she had, I think five or six kids. So they're basically homeless. And so, um, the people are, are donating for Mary. And uh, I'll just say good luck with all that. Premier Medical Associates brings nostalgic ice cream dance party to Village's neighborhood. You guys heard Deb talking about that on Wednesday Night Live uh, in her neighborhood. She lives in like a cul-de-sac kind of area. And at her driveway, literally every night, I think she said around 6, 6.30, something like that, that uh, her neighbors all come over there, probably bring a, a chair and arm, and they sit you know, a ways apart from one another. They just sit in the driveway every evening and, and uh, shoot the bull. And who knows what they do, shoot the bull, have a beer, you know, and then they go home every night because they're, they're all, like us, we're all homebounders. <laughs> you gotta do something. So they're keeping their social distancing and they're, they're, they're having a good time. So you gotta do something. So here's what these people are doing. Is that working? Yeah. I see my little wine up there now. Can you see that? That's what they're doing out there in the driveway. A little ice cream get together, I guess, and somebody's coming out with an ice cream truck or something. Woman arrested after pretending to scan items in self-checkout at Walmart. You know, I've always been against those self-checkout lines. I don't like them whatsoever. I, uh, I can see a purpose for them for certain things, 
but to, to be an average every day, anybody can use these things right away. You know, I just thought to myself, what's going to keep somebody from saying, oh, I, I forgot to scan that. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and elderly people, especially here, I can imagine them actually doing it, just forgetting. It's not to do it on purpose, but if they don't scan it and hit that door, they're subject for arrest. I mean, you can say all day long, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I, that was a total accident. Are they gonna, are they gonna let you go or are they still gonna charge you? I don't know. I'm totally against it. I don't go to them, I, I, I won't use them unless I have to. And I think I had to use one in Rockport only because my cousin's wife worked there and she uses them all the time. And, and she uses them though because she doesn't want to put undue labor on people she works with because she works at that Walmart. See what I'm getting at? So she'd go to the self-checkout line so they don't have to worry about her. And she took me over there. And I said, I'm not doing that. So she done it for me. Uh, here's another report of the coronavirus here. By the way, I don't know which one of these reports is older or newer. You'll just have to uh, Google it or something. I just go through them one at a time. Villages held a study Tuesday with 76 cases of the coronavirus as the Tri-County topped 500 positive results. Sumter County added 10 patients, 9 in Bushnell and 1 in Coleman for a total of 163 COVID-19 cases. Hmm, question about Coleman. I wonder if that one case could be at the prison down there. I heard some reports about prisons. And I can't remember where I heard that at. So when I said one case in Coleman, Coleman has a federal prison. I'm just wondering. Anyway. Of these patients, 69% are men, 36% are women, 68 live live in the villages of the others, 49 lives in Bushnell, 21 in Lake Panasovsky. Seven each in Webster and Wildwood, three in Coleman, and one each in Oxford and Sumterville. Six cases also have been identified in the Lady Lake portion of the county. We'll get to the end of this sooner or later. Amenity fees paying for plenty of activity behind the scenes in the villages. They're probably writing this story or somebody put this story out because I've heard a lot of rumors of a lot of people complaining about paying amenity fees when there's nothing open. And I, I see some, um, I see some claim in that. On the business side of it, I see a problem there. But as a resident side of it, I, I can see where the golf is still open here. We still have golf everywhere. That is an amenity. Part of your amenity fees. So they're maintaining them courses and whatever. You should pay something for that, right? A little bit of something? The pools are closed. How much is that worth? I don't know. All the record centers I think are closed and they've been closed for a while. How much is that worth? I don't know. I don't know how you'd figure this out. Residents have been grumbling about the continued collection of amenity fees during closures caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Might be surprised to learn what's going on behind the scenes in the villages. 80% of the district's government workforce remains on the job, including members of the village's public safety department, community watch gate attendants, community standards billing, uh, customer service and administration employees. With the recreation centers closed, district property management is utilizing this closure time to accomplish approved capital project enhancements to many of the region recreation facilities. And if you guys watched, uh, I got a video, it may not have come out yet. It's on Patreon, I know, my Patreon page. They always get a lot of this stuff first for a while before I go to YouTube. And a lot of that stuff on Patreon, I don't post it anywhere else. It just stays on Patreon. But I, I did a, a a golf cart ride from here all the way to Colony uh, Shopping Plaza in real time to kind of give you an idea how long it takes by golf cart to get there. Well, along the way, I went into the Colony Recreational 
facility, which is right there, and went around the parking lot to kind of show you, you know, what's going on. Well, when I did that, uh, the cameras on top of the golf cart picked up. They were working there. Uh, they were cleaning the side of the building. When I went by, they had a high pressure washer washing the building. I don't know if they were just washing it or were they getting prepared to maybe to do some painting. I don't know. But yeah, while these rec centers and things are closed, they're taking advantage and they're going in and they're doing some work. And I say, you know, bravo to that. When the restrictions are lifted, our goal is that you will be able to once again enjoy the facilities and amenities in the condition that you have always expected and experienced. District Manager Richard Beyer said in a memo to Community Development District Supervisors. A village of Winifred man was arrested after he was spotted driving a golf cart down U.S. Highway 27 and 441. <laughs> I guess you have to live here. If you don't know what 27 and 441 is, it's a madhouse up there. And especially in the daytime, especially in the wintertime, I even hate going up there because of the traffic that's on that road. It's a thoroughfare between... A thoroughfare between Leesburg and Ocala and beyond that um, where 27 and 441 splits if you stay on 27 it's all, it goes to the right 441 will go to the left and kind of go through Leesburg that's where a lot of good restaurants are at they 27 south right there and keep going for those of you that you don't know it's a back way to Disney World I used to go that way all the time and I bring the grandkids down here Anyway, this guy drove his golf cart somehow, some way, on 27 and 441. Now, Winifred is uh, north of here. I'm not sure how far it is from 27 and 441, but somewhere he, he must have been drinking. It usually is. I ain't even going to read it anymore, but, but he was probably drinking and what can I tell you? It happens. A long line of customers outside Sam's Club. And Lady Lake. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you can you see the line of people? This is Sam's Club up there. Can you see the line of people right there going down the sidewalk? Yeah, well that's not unusual because a lot of the stores are limiting how many people can go in at a time and they just you know you just kind of wait your turn. That's just it's just um, it's just the world we live in today and that's just the way it is. Sumter County incumbents desperate to desperate for re-election signatures. <clears throat> hey, these guys are the one that voted in the 25% tax increase, and it was a sweetheart deal for the developer. And everybody's mad about it, totally upset about it. And so these guys are going to get voted out. I I highly I predict it. They're going to get voted out. And I think as they, all the other ones start coming up for election, people should take note and bounce them all out. CDD9 urged to get in writing financial responsibility for lofts of Brownwood. I've done video on lofts of Brownwood. There have been a lot of them. You guys know what lofts of Brownwood is. It's uh, apartments down in Brownwood that you can rent. And I think the idea is to experience the lifestyle. That's what you're buying here more than anything is the lifestyle and use that time to decide whether you like it, you don't like it, and if you don't like it, then you can continue looking elsewhere. Uh, if you do like it, then hopefully you'll buy a home. If I was a developer, that's what I would think. Somehow, and I don't understand any of this, District 9 is annexing the lofts of Brownwood, or they, they petitioned to be able to annex the lofts of Brownwood into their district, even though their district lines doesn't even touch uh, the district lines where the lofts of Brownwood's at. Actually, I think the lofts of Brownwood is in District 10, which is my district. And I don't know how that's going to work out, but apparently District 9 is seriously considering of annexing it in. And um, so that's what this is about, to get in writing what their financial responsibilities are going to be. I don't know. COVID-19 virus strikes two assisted living facilities in the villages.
villager ticketed in crash that sends a golf cart driver to hospital. You see all kinds of silly things that happen in golf carts around here between golf carts and cars when they share the road. One of the more silly things that I've seen, and, and this is something that you see not on a regular basis, but you do see it. And you gotta be aware of it, especially if you're sharing the road with cars. If you're on a golf cart path, then it's not a problem. It's only when you're sharing the road with cars. Cars are always in a hurry to get around you. Even though we have our own lane for us, cars are not to be driving in that lane. So what a car will do inevitably, especially the ones that are in a hurry, those are the ones you want to watch, the ones that want to get around you. They'll go around you and then turn on the right turn signal real quick and make a turn in a road right there in front of you. And a lot of golf carts has ha actually run into cars because they're, they're doing that. And that car's at fault for doing that. And he gets ticketed. There was a guy a couple of years ago up and around the Spanish Springs area that the car done that. Turned in front of this golf cart. He run into the side of the car. He was sent to a trauma center in Ocala, I believe. And he died like the next day of head trauma. So, you know, I don't know why cars do that, but they do. When Dixie is picking up the grocery tabs for first responders and healthcare workers. Way to go, Win Dixie. Publix, what are you doing? Okay, I think that's all. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, this will be uh, the Friday news. I get it all edited and get it up. Um, congratulations to the WNL winners of the uh, contest we had. And uh, once again, I wanna thank my moderators uh, for helping out with the show. I wanna thank Deb, I wanna thank Sue, I wanna thank, uh, uh, gosh, who, uh, Linda. Linda's in California, so getting all this tied together so we could all get together, sometimes a little bit of an effort. But, uh, and I also want to thank you guys, the viewers, because without you, there wouldn't be no WNL. There would be no reason for it. And I doubly want to thank all you people that gave us the uh, Super Chats and the Super Stickers. Uh, I use that money generally to buy stuff to give away. So that's what we use it for. So I'm going to get out of here. You guys have a great day. See you guys on the other side.